thank you so much for joining us today for our Wednesday Connect program. This is, um, we developed this program during the pandemic, of course, and we wanted a a special program to allow people to engage, connect, and of course, learn something new. So uh, we decided to keep it going because we still had the interest. So thanks again for joining. For those of you who do not know me, I'm Nancy Walters. I'm the Executive Director of the La Jolla Community Center. And we have a lot of programs going on here every day from fitness and wellness to art and language classes. And of course, we have special events like musical um, series and concerts and speaker series, which include our Wednesday Connect. So we're really happy here to have Melissa Murray joining us. She's going to give us a lot of information about a very important topic to all of us, which is why we're all here. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about um, Melissa in just a sec. Um, I just want to share that for all of those who are who are here, please feel free to use the um, chat function on the bottom of the screen. You can use that during the, the presentation, but you can also ask questions directly to Melissa afterwards. Um, for I'm sorry, there's people joining here. You, you'll be able to ask Melissa questions. So no worries on that. If you have a burning question, you can write it in. If not, you can wait till the end. So uh, Melissa is a image architect and style expert. She offers practical guidance to high achievers designed to strengthen their image, presence, style, influence, and most importantly, their confidence in high stakes situations. Melissa transforms her client's image to give them a competitive advantage by teaching them how to navigate the personal and professional brand. She expertly blends each client's visual impression with the message they're delivering, balancing image with brand for pitch perfect delivery and success on camera at appearances and helps them become recognizable within their industry. She prepares each client's personal brand and wardrobe to meet the challenge of gaining influence in their chosen industry and has been instrumental in the success of many high profile media and corporate professionals. So please help me welcome Melissa Marie. Hello, lovely ladies. So really what I want to talk to you about um, is how we're going to properly clean out your closet. For those of you who said you have all black, we can change that. No big deal. Um, that is one of the um, easiest colors to buy for. Um, but then, as you mentioned, our entire wardrobe can get really <laughs> saturated with black. So um, we're going to talk about how to clean out your closet, how to organize your closet, how to get dressed for, and, and in this case, with all of you ladies traveling, um, and then we're going to talk about, um, you know, how to shop your closet, and it, I think this is, for me, um, the most fun is not just organizing, but then when everything is really clean, all of a sudden you go, look, all the possibilities have opened up. And now I have more room to, to either to go buy or to source different things. So we're just gonna dive in. I'm gonna keep, uh, I've got an eye on my timer. So um, listen, if you're gonna clean out your closet, I want for you to, to set yourself up for, for success. Because as we all know, cleaning out our, our closets um, can be a little daunting and overwhelming. And this is, just happens to be one of my favorite quotes. Um, part of success is preparation on purpose. So uh, <laughs> this, so before you want to start going and purchasing new things, we're going back to cleaning out the closet. So um, pre-purchasing non-slip velvet hangers, and I'll send you guys all this presentation so you can just, it's, I have a checklist. Um, but especially for us women, we have blouses that tend to slide, you know, off of any normal regular hanger. So you can buy these on Amazon, you can buy them anywhere, but the non-slip velvet hangers are my absolute favorite. Um, and then in our closets, we tend not to have the right lighting. So when we go in there, sometimes we don't know if those pants are black or blue or all of a sudden you think you're putting on a navy pair of pants and then you leave the house and all, it's, you go, oh, wrong color. So they have really good lighting that you can buy at Walmart, at Target, at you can order online, but you want a, a temperature of a 300,000 
uh, sorry, 3000 to 3500. That provides the cleanest white light. Um, you can also use a fluorescent light. Personally, I'm, I'm, for whatever reason, I seem to be a little photosensitive to fluorescent lights. So that's not something I would put in my closet. I tend to find myself squinting when I have a fluorescent light and it's like going into any school or um, lots of places. I, it, for whatever reason, it just tends to give me a headache. So that's not my preferred preference, but you can have a 5,000, you can do a 5,000 natural daylight light. And it's just a light bulb. This isn't a, um, but this just helps you see what is in your closet and see more clearly so that you're not saying, well, this orange is gonna match or that's red or that's yellow. It's just what you wanna have is a really clear light so you can see color and scope of what's in your closet. And then, I mean, th again, this is all pre-work ahead of the time that you get into your closet or your drawers, your dressers. Um, you need to create a space and Barbara and I have done this a couple of times. So you wanna keep, do a space where you have, here are my keep items. I wanna keep these. These are my donate pile. This is my consign pile. And this is my tailor repair or clean pile. So you just, you wanna make sure that uh, assuming that we all have um, our primary bathroom is right off of our primary uh, bedroom. So make space in your bedroom or another part of your house to do this activity and preferably in your bedroom that or, or a bedroom that has the most natural lighting. And then make sure you allow yourself enough time and you don't feel rushed because this obviously can be an overwhelming process of trying all your clothes on. Just wanna just take it down a little bit. And what I recommend is that um, if, you, if you can grab your closest girlfriend or friend or somebody that you trust their, their style to, <laughs> grab a glass of wine, have them come over and have fun with this. Do not make this a daunting task. You know, I'm from Texas, so we have a lot of closet space. And then I moved to California and I was like, huh, where, where are all my clothes going to go? Because <laughs> I took up every closet in the house. And so, you know, the reality is you don't need a lot of clothes. And especially for those of you who are traveling, but give yourself enough time and, and the grace of getting it done in one day. Not five days, not two days. Give yourself, just block off a day and give yourself the time to do this and potentially not plan anything that night because it, it's, it's a little, it can be a little overwhelming. So if you think about this is that people only wear one third less than one third of what's in their closet. So why do we have all these clothes that we don't wear? <laughs> it's, it's so self-consuming. It takes up so much space, um, not only physical space, but, but emotional space. So when, I, when I'm working with clients, what I, I tend to find is what, if I walk in their closet, I know emotionally <laughs> exactly where they are. So if the closet is a mess, you know, they always say the kitchen is the house of the home. Well, not in my world. The closet is the house of the home. And I know exactly, can tell exactly what's going on just by looking in their closet. So if you're only using a third of what you're wearing, this gives you permission to let go of the other things that you aren't using, haven't been using. For those of you who are going to be traveling, that you don't need to take a bag this big of accessories, right? You, you, need, you need the basics and the basics that look great because you want to document your journey of your travel and you may not want to look the same way every day, but you can use accessories and scarves and jewelry 
even choose to make an impact on the same outfit. So you could wear the same outfit three days in a row if you needed to, but you can make them look completely different. So again, become the master of your closet. I, this is an extreme example on the left side. Um, you just want everything to be streamlined. You, you don't need a thousand hangers and you don't need things on your floor. Um, again, don't, don't get caught up in more is more. You don't have to have more. You just have to have what works for you in, in your lifestyle. Uh oh, my mouse stopped working. Let's see if I can get this guy going again. There we go. Um, you know, again, your your closet should be a place of peace and not of stress. So what I want for you to remove from your closet is I'm gonna move you over here just for a quick second. Um, anything that does does not belong in your wardrobe. So I, I have encountered people with um from everything. They've got speakers that they haven't used in 20 years. They've got furniture in their closet that doesn't belong there. They've got um, all kinds of, uh, they've got paperwork and you really want your closet to be a, a place of peace. So also you wanna get rid of any clothing that does not fit or that you have an emotional attachment to. And I'm gonna talk about number two here um, in the next couple of slides. What you want in your closet is for it to be fully functioning. Everything should fit. If it doesn't fit, it's out. If it's overly worn, it's out. If um, let's say you're holding on to your, um, your wedding gown or what you got engaged in, but you're never gonna wear it, it it's okay to keep it. It just needs to go to another closet. Some, something that's not right where you're gonna look at every day. And again, you, you ladies know any overly worn shoes, they're out. All right, so this is how you should feel. Clothes should make you feel powerful, not, not sad, not um, like you just rolled out of bed. Like they should make you feel like Wonder Woman, just standing in your power pose. Doesn't matter wherever you are, even in an airport. I always say, um, you know, wear one thing that someone can compliment you on. Whether you're in the grocery store, it starts a conversation. It starts um, new friendships. So you want somebody to be able to say, good morning. Oh my gosh, I love that purse, ring, shirt. I love your hair, whatever it is. I just say, give yourself an opportunity um, to make and meet new friends, potential business people, potential travel partners, whatever that looks like for you. Let me move you guys back over here. Um, so let's, so now that you got, you know what you need to do, you're gonna remove any items that don't fit today. You're gonna put them in the donate or consign area that you've designated. You're gonna have the keep items. And before they go, and you're trying everything on, this is truly trying everything on. You're going to examine each garment before it goes back on a hanger. So again, we talked a little bit about hangers. Um, it is preference. I just prefer the velvet hangers that you can buy. Um, you can buy them at TJ Maxx, Amazon. Um, if you want the really nice ones, I can send you a list. Uh, to me, they all work the same. Um, and then your consign items, you're going to keep on the hanger. And the reason you're going to keep your consign items on the hanger, and, and they really need to be new within the past one to two years. Um, if you keep them on the hanger, one, they won't wrinkle, and they're more likely to be accepted by the consignment shop. And you tend to get a higher value for them. Um, all of your donated items, Take off the hanger fold, put in a plastic bag and take it to um, your favorite nonprofit, whatever that may be. But those don't need to be um, on hangers. Uh, now, again, we talked about you're gonna have the emotional sentimental items 
for any items that are out of season. So I know that Barbara just went um, on a ski trip with her husband. And so you, it's not in season here for us in San Diego or, or Florida right now. <laughs> um, so you wanna get anything that's not in season out. Again, if it's an emotional, sentimental, I got engaged in this dress, that just goes in a bin or goes in another closet just not in your primary closet. All right. So, so after, so I'm going to back up just for one quick second because I, um, I want to tell you that before you get dressed and start this process, I want for you, if you grab a friend or your husband or whoever it is that's going to do this with you, I want for you to put your makeup on as you would if you were going on a date or if you were going to a meeting. I want for you to do your hair as if you were going on a date or to a meeting. Because when you start pulling, the closets and our clothes have a lot of energy. And so if we've gained weight or lost weight or we're feeling insecure about anything, I want for this part for you to feel beautiful and powerful and strong. Um, I want for you to put on your absolutely favorite outfit before you go through your closet. And I want for you to do this because I, it's the outfits that people say, oh my God, I love that color on you. Oh my gosh, you look so pretty today. Oh, I love you in that print. You, you, we all know what it is. It, is. it could be animal print, it could be fuchsia, it could be whatever it is that's specific to you, but I want for you, it's things that are comfortable. Um, I want for you to put that on first before you start trying clothes on because you will immediately notice that, oh, there's a twinkle in your eye. Oh, your posture is just a little bit taller, a little bit stronger, a little more powerful. So that's the, that's where you go with the mentality, especially as you're trying things on and you're like, yeah, I don't know. The answer is if you say, I don't know, it should go. So if, and if you get stuck doing this, going through all of your clothes, try on your second favorite outfit and repeat the process. Because again, you'll notice your posture You'll notice the twinkle in your eye. You will notice how fabulous you feel. And then you start trying your clothes on because everything should be to that standard. And, and to, you know, to be honest, we, we love to do our own projects around our house. So I have a drawer that is my painting clothes drawer. <laughs> and that is the only time it comes out. It does not come out if I'm going to be gardening out front or, but you, it's okay to keep some um, kind of junky clothes, but take them out of your everyday closet and put them in, in, in a drawer or somewhere else that it doesn't need to be accessed every single day. Because we want for your closet to be fully functioning on all cylinders at all times. And even this includes when you're traveling as well. So immediately after you have cleaned out your closet, the, this is what goes into your car and is never to be seen again in your home. Because this is what happens is we go, oh, well, I, I know I said that was an orphan. I'll, I'll explain the orphan pieces. Um, I will pull it back out of my stuff because I might need it someday. No be decisive. So you've got immediately what goes in the car are your orphan pieces, which I'll tell you what those are, your donation pieces, your tailor pieces, your consignment pieces, your cleaner pieces, and your repair pieces. So anything that's missing a button, a snap, a, um, it's okay to keep those as you're going through your wardrobe. It just means you got to get them out and do something with them. So Orphan pieces. I know I had a slide on orphan pieces. So I must, I might have, let me just go. 
Well, let me explain what orphan pieces are. How am I gonna... Wow, my thing jumped quite a few. Okay, sorry guys. Um, okay, so orphan pieces are where you have, you bought this blouse, shirt, blazer, pants, whatever it is, you bought it and it's still sitting in your closet and you have nothing to do with them. You cannot figure out, you go, I can't match this or that. So we all have those. And I want for you to make a separate bag for those orphan pieces so that when you go to the store, when you go to the mall and you're shopping, that you are taking that bag with you. And when the salesperson says, how can I help you? You say, yes, I need help matching these things because I'm tired of having them in my closet and I don't know what to do with them. So the orphan pieces go in your car as well. It is, it's silly to keep those pieces that you've spent money on. And sometimes we do it there's a big sale and we go, oh, that's just cute. I'll one day I'll find out what, where I'm going to put this. Um, so just these six areas are what you're going to put in your car. Orphan pieces, donated items, tailor, consign, cleaners, and repair. You can do all of that in one day. You don't have to make this, uh, I've got, you're going to make multiple trips as you can see, but you can get it done in a few hours. So um, now I want to talk about getting your closet organized. So success in your closet. You know how we tend to keep suits or twin sets, sweater sets together? Each garment should have its own hanger. So I say this because it will make shopping your closet and looking around, it'll let you be more creative in your closet. So every single garment in your closet needs to be on its own hanger. Again, this makes mixing and matching super easy. Um, you want, in terms of, we all have different closets. Um, the things that you wear most frequently that's your prime real estate. You want that to be at the front of your closet so you can grab and go and get there quickly. Um, and I want for you to organize your clothes when everything has its own individual hanger. I want for you to organize your clothes in clusters. So what I mean by that is all pants should go together. All shirts should go together. So you would organize, um, probably the easiest way to do it is you would start with um, camisoles, then um, sleeveless tops, then you would go to short sleeve tops, and then you would go to long sleeve tops. So everything in clusters so that when you go in, you go, okay, all my tops are here. They're not in partially that closet, partially that closet, or partially on this bar and that bar. Um, and the same thing, you would put all jackets and blazers together, all pants together, all skirts together. Um, and what I like to do when, now that I've got clusters, I mean, it really, it's amazing how much it opens up your mind to be, to do fun and creative things. It's like, Oh, I broke up that sweater set. Now I can wear the camisole with this pair of jeans and I can wear the sweater with this dress or so you're just trying to give yourself more options. And I think when, when everything is on one hanger, you just kind of pull it, pull out the set and you go, okay, here we go. Instead of being creative. And again, I like to color coordinate light to dark from, from left to right depending on how your closet is. That's just the, the way, um, that's the way mine works and that's how most of my clients, how I organize it. So colors, light to dark. Um, and it'll show you 
for those of us who love to wear black, all of a sudden we get, woo, we got this much black in our, in our shirt. Instead of seeing all these beautiful colors, rainbow, and you should have a rainbow of colors. I'm not saying black's bad. Listen, I, I, I'm in black right now. I love a great black shirt, but I think you have to be, um, you know, there is something to be said about, you know, when your eyes sparkle, when you wear certain colors, when you, um, you, you, you want to evoke this energy and you want to, you want people around you. And, and, and that's a great way to do that. Also, like if you have your accessories close to your closet. So what that will do is sometimes for um, accessories create a mood and all of a sudden it's like, today I just feel like being blingy, you know, for lack of a better word. Today, I feel like being a little more subtle and clean and classic. And sometimes the right necklace, the right ring, the right scarf, um, the right pair of shoes can inspire an outfit and it can inspire you to do different things. So um, if you have, you know, once you've cleaned out your closet, your drawers, your hosiery, your everything else, you, accessories are a big part of that. If you're not using your accessories, they go into the same keep, donate, consign. If you're not using it, same, same principle. So once you get your clothes back in the closet, the ones that are your quote unquote keeps, you're going to make a list because you are going to see things that maybe you had that were overly worn or maybe a little tattered, but it's a color or concept of a garment that you need to replace. So make a list of if all of a sudden you go, well, none of my jeans fit. I got rid of all my jeans. Um, okay, you need to put jeans on your list. <laughs> it's, you know, or for me, if I get rid of um, my camis, um, I go, okay, what colors do I need? Mine were, you know, overly worn. And the last two times I wore them, I knew it. And it's like, okay, put a black cami on the list. Okay, put a navy cami on the list. You know what you're missing. And so that's why I encourage you not to continue to buy orphan pieces because they take up a lot of room and space and a lot of mental energy. So you want to, your closet needs to be fully functioning, whether it's your travel bag, whether if you're traveling, everything needs to be, it needs to fit and it needs to be fully functioning. All right. So if you have to shop, Again, create a list before you go. Plus you've got your orphan stuff that you love that you just can't find anywhere. Bring that. You've got your list and your orphan clothes. And then budget appropriately so that, you know, if you say, really today, I only want to spend $200, $100, whatever it is. Do not go beyond your budget. Your, your job is to, at that point to get what you, what you know, the necessities, what you know you need that will help round out your wardrobe and be compliment, complimentary to that. Um, do not be sold by someone who's not an expert. And we've all experienced this. Uh, you know, you ask the lady in the dressing room next door and you're like, oh, what does this look like? And they're like, oh, what, what are they going to tell you? No, it looks terrible. They're going to say, oh, that looks so pretty. So my, don't do it. Don't ask the sales associate because the sales associate 99% of the time is on commission. So their job is to sell. So if you are in the fitting room, I want for you, if you are having questions in your mind, it is okay to buy it, try it on at home with whatever you think it might work with. And it's also okay to return. Just check return policies. Also, when you are in a fitting room, there is a reason that they have a bench in the fitting room. It is so that if you're trying on shorts, a skirt, a whatever, anything on the bottom, you need to sit down and look in the mirror and make sure that it's flattering from that angle. 
because many times we don't understand. We go, oh, I stand there and, and I look, this looks great. And then you go to sit down and in a skirt and all of a sudden your skirt is rising up. So use the chair, the bench that's provided for you. Um, do not purchase more orphan items. This is the hardest one, big sale. I love it, but I have nothing to wear it with. Do not purchase more orphan items. I cannot say this enough. If you can't find it the same day, don't buy it. If you cannot find something to match it with, just don't. If you're, um, what I tend to do is I just grab my phone. I take a picture of the label on the inside and I take a picture of the tag. So that if I get home, I have remorse that I didn't buy it and all of a sudden saw that there, that, oh my gosh, this would be so good in my wardrobe. Then I just, I can go online and order it. It's as simple as that. Again, we talked about don't buy more stuff if it's on sale. It's because it's just going to sit there. So, you know, here are some examples of ways that you can mix and match. Um, different pieces. And I think based on this, you can see why I would want you to separate bottoms, tops, blazers, belts, like everything you can, I mean, this could just serve as inspiration um, of how all of these can be mixed and matched actually together. So that's what you want your wardrobe to be is so that if you are traveling, that you want everything to be working for you. I should be able to wear on travel, I should be able to wear that cami fiber 10 times if I'm gone for two weeks. Um, I should be able to wear a, a pair of jeans, maybe two different colors. I should be able to wear those over the course of two weeks. So again, I could pair the skirt that's on the right. I could pair that skirt, imagine the combinations. It could be a pink shirt, a white shirt, a, a black shirt, a uh, what other colors? Orange shirt. It, I could even do it with a green shirt. So you can kind of start seeing where if you have the basics, the basics will go a long way. So that's how when you're traveling, how to make things fun. And even just in your day-to-day -day life, the black pants, you could wear with anything. The white pants, the same thing. I get the question all the time about white pants and when can I wear them year round, year round, especially for those of us who live in California, Florida, Texas. Um, all right. So I want to, I'm going to wrap this up because I, I know you have questions and I want to be mindful of your time. We've been, it's 1040. So I want to leave time for you, you ladies to ask questions. So my top tips, I want you to shop your closet first, then create a list to fill in the gaps. It's what we've been talking about. Um, for those of us who live in California, Florida, consider buying year round fabrics instead of like here, we don't need wool. We don't, you know, we don't need the heavy duty stuff. We can, we can layer. And that's pretty much the case anywhere. Uh, you know, don't be afraid to use color strategically. So I want to, I want to tell you a little bit about how you know what your color is. Um, what you do is when you get out of the shower and you, do, do, do all of you have like a magnifying mirror, something like this guy that has a light around it. So what you wanna do, and if you don't, it's okay, just get in front of the mirror and have as much lighting as you can on yourself. And then you're, again, no makeup on. This is just out of the shower. And you wanna look at the color of your eyes. So, I mean, so for me, I know we're all on Zoom, so I'll give you an example. So I have, um, my eyes are hazel, with gold flecks, with brown flecks. And as we age, we tend to get a blue ring around the, around the outside of our pupils. So um, know that what I'm telling you may change over time and years. But when you look at all of those colors in your eyes, those are the colors you should be wearing. 
So for me, emerald green, um, most of us have um, chameleon eyes. And what that means is um, if, we, if we have uh, not brown eyes or dark eyes, but if we have blue or green eyes, it means if we wear a pop of blue, our eyes are going to appear to be blue. If we wear a pop of green, our eyes will appear to be green. So, um, you know, look at, and even when I look at my own eyes and with the brown flex, anytime I wear brown, I get the most compliments. It's, I, I'm a brown girl I, and it's really interesting. So, you know, when I wear pops of color, whether it's the greens or the blues, yes, you get compliments, but um, I, I kind of just, I kind of fall back into myself when I'm, when I'm in brown. I don't, I don't know what it is, but um, so that's how you can figure out. And, and you also have to pay attention, like I was telling you earlier, pay attention when people are giving you a compliment and what you're wearing. It's very telling. It is very hard for most people to pull off um, pastels, yellows. Um, they, they can tend to wash us out if we don't have the right coloring to pull that off. I mean, it, um, most blondes can pull off pastels where brunettes have a harder time. Um, so just be, be cognizant of when people are paying you the most compliments and what you're wearing because it, it will tell you because you just light up a room when you walk in. Um, also, when, you in, when you're in that moment, most people say, I, I can't wear red. But when you, are, when you have the mirror in front of you, again, no makeup on, I want you to look at your natural hemoglobins. And these are right here, okay? So here, 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 and the color of your lips. So some of us have, um, I, I, sorry that I have makeup on right now to do this demonstration, but if I don't, my lips are really pale, they're very small, um, but I have a lot of red blue right here in terms of hemoglobin. So I can pull off a bright red lipstick. So that kind of tells you what color palette for your lips. For me, I can't, I, if I put a pink on, my face turns a completely different color and my eyes don't light up. So no, I mean, this is again, a quick activity just to see, but if you are naturally red and as we age, we do tend to have um, more of a muzzle through, through this area and it, and it changes, it, it's, it's always changing. You're never gonna get, um, in the winter time, I cannot pop a big red lip. When I have a tan, yes, I can. So just kind of pay attention, do a, do a little check every couple months, every, let's say every season. Um, I want you to have a good tailor on speed dial because 99% of us cannot take something off of the rack and make it work for us. So, and you can find tailors, they are, they're just, they're amazing to have so that you have the right fit. You know, we tend to buy pants that have pockets that pucker a little bit, have those sewn up. That'll take 10 pounds off of you. Um, I, I'm assuming everybody wants to know how to take 10 pounds off of their, their midsection. Well, get the right and proper fitting bra. So get, get your girls up and off of your torso because it, your, when your torso is elongated, you look thinner. So an ill-fitting bra also has, leaves you with, um, you know, some potentially some back fat. So most of us believe that our bra should, our, our support should come from the strap. That is not the case. Your support should come from the back. So as we all age, our bras are not gonna be as narrow. Remember with the Victoria's Secret narrow bra <laughs> clasping in the back. We need, as we age, we're, our bras in the back will get wider and wider as we need a little more support, uh, as we lose um, muscle. So um, I would say the, your best bet to find a good and proper fitting bra is to go um, to, go to Nordstrom's, ask for the manager, of the bra intimacy section, because who knows more about the products and the floor than the person who manages it. 
and tell them what you want this or these bras to do in terms of function. Because we all have different needs. Some of us are bigger, smaller. Some of us need athletic support. Some of us need, wear more t-shirts that you need a bra with no lace. So really think about what you want before you go there. And I'm happy to answer questions on that as well. Um, another just kind of a trick of the trade is that, that we all have days where we don't feel good. I mean, it just is where we just don't feel our best. Um, if you wear bolder, brighter colors next to your face, um, people will look at your clothing first and then they go up to the eyes. So um, I spent years in chronic pain. So I, I'm the master at camouflaging, not in chronic pain anymore, thank goodness. But um, I always knew how to divert. And how, you know, it's almost like saying, okay, well, when we don't feel good, don't wear black because it doesn't, black doesn't really put a pep in your step. It's, it's, it's harder for people to be like, oh my gosh, how are you? You look so good when you're in a brighter or bolder color. So, I, and I can see based on, for those of you who are on here, all of us on, on this line right now could wear a brighter, bolder color if we're not feeling good and it will light up your face. So um, another tip is the whites of your, a white shirt should not be whiter than the whites of your eyes or your teeth color. This is an old, old hack. So you will almost never find me wearing a bright white t-shirt or any kind of bright white shirt because my teeth are, as I've aged, they're yellower. It could be the wine, I'm not sure. Um, but it, it also, um, you, you don't want the whites of your eyes to, to appear yellow. So a bright white can do that if you don't have bright white eyes or bright white teeth. So instead, I always opt for cream. For me, cream looks better unless I'm going to the beach and wearing a beach t-shirt and sunglasses. So um, let me know if you have any questions on that. Um, wear, always, always, always wear something that someone can compliment you on. It is, it brings people, it draws people into your world. And whether it's you meeting a new friend at Starbucks, a, a job opportunity, um, someone that you're traveling, you, you know, make a new friend while you're traveling, um, but always have something on or with you that you feel so confident in that someone's going to say, hey, Fran, I love that leopard print shirt, right? I mean, so I, I love your haircut. You know, you want somebody, you, you want to feel good. And when do we not feel good when somebody's paying us compliments? We're like, yeah, I rocked it today. You know, like today, this morning, I put on a full face for you. And now I can't wait to go work with clients and do what I do, but I'm already made up for the day. doesn't mean every day you have to get made up. I, I don't, I think COVID has changed all of that, um, but I think you, and to put your best foot forward, I think it's important um, for you to feel good and look good and for you to be in clothing that represents you and your personality and, um, and just, it, it just, when you, when you look good and you feel good, great things just happen. Can't even explain it. Great things just happen when you look good and feel good. They usually don't when you're like, oh, okay, this again today. So again, I, I just say, try your best to do, to look your best every day. All right. So I'm going to turn it over to Nancy and you ladies ask any questions that you like and I will do my very best to answer them. Thank you, Melissa. Thank you for sharing all this wonderful information with us. I learned a lot. I hope everyone else did too. And you can see Melissa's information on the screen right now. That's Melissa, um, Melissa at melissamurray.com. Phone number is 858-750-0234. Well, a big thank you. Oh, there's, oh, it's just a thank you from Rosemary. Thank you. Um, thank you for being here, Melissa. Again, we learned a lot. I hope you all did too. If you want to contact Melissa, please feel free to email or call her. And I hope to see you all back soon for our next Wednesday Connect or in-person program. Thank you for attending and have a great day.